So, Joe, how old does your kid need to be before you can leave them on their own or watch their younger close. siblings? I was this close. <laughs> uh, well, so there's a couple of different ways to approach this because there are definitely legal precedents uh, in basically every state being out of the United States for when you can leave a child on their own or when they can babysit. In Georgia, as long as you leave a basset hound with them at infancy, they're fine. <laughs> Is that how it works in Georgia? Georgia is very backwards, my friend. I don't know. Um, but to be completely honest, I think it depends on the maturity of the kid. Because there are some 16-year-olds that I would not leave by themselves. But then there's some younger kids that are way more mature and responsible that, that could be left alone. Um, and so, but I, I think as a general rule... For leaving a kid on their own, it also depends on the time frame. Are we talking like a couple of hours? Are we talking about like overnight or multiple days? You know, so there's different circumstances uh, to consider. But if we're talking about just, you know, a couple of hours of babysitting or whatever, so say you want to go to the movies, uh -huh. then uh, I, I, again, maturity comes into play, but I think. 15 or 16 if they're sufficiently mature is plenty old enough to watch their younger kids but it also depends on how young their kids are i wouldn't trust them with say a baby but if the younger kids are you know five or older and are sufficiently why are you leaving a baby behind in this scenario are you going out for milk i said the movies but why are you leaving a baby? <laughs> why a baby? would you take a move a why baby to the movies? A baby can sleep through the movie. Why are you why are uh, you abandoning why are you ripping your wife away from the most I, precious thing in her life right now where you come third <laughs> to? Why are you trying to make her do this? You're such a horrible uh, husband. Wait, I would wait, wait, wait. I, I would I'm never supposed... bring a baby to the movies. Yeah. Why would you do that? What is wrong with you? <laughs> and, my and, babies loved movies they were all good all the time look, and if they started getting fussy, you, out just because you fill half their bottle with nyquil doesn't <laughs> constitute that they fell asleep at the movies <laughs> my nerdy brought to you by nyquil because it works um what constitutes alone does a family member down the street or a close friend that's a neighbor count as even if they don't come over to watch the kid count as not leaving the kid alone uh that's still alone in my book okay that's that's like saying oh they've got a phone they can call an ambulance if they need someone like that's that's how effective a neighbor kid I, is i honestly i mean this I, I do forget you're not gen x sometimes so we're very close in, in mindset and age but there's a slight gap there dude my mom would go shopping an hour away because we lived in a small rural town and we went to a she had to go to a larger town that actually had a grocery store in it uh that was an hour away and i was eight i think at the time not quite i don't i know what in 10 yet and we had a neighbor down the street and we had basically we had my dad worked at the church and so i had his secretary's number uh that could dial you know, because it's all wall phones, but we had that written down, and we had a neighbor down the street. And if anything happened, I was to call one of them if I couldn't get my dad, right? Because there's no cell phones and stuff. And that was just that. It was just, man, you're on your own for a few hours because ultimately, oh, and you couldn't go outside, right? That's the one rule is when you're alone, you stay inside. Yeah. And don't open the door for anybody. No, yeah, okay, at, least yeah, that, yeah. at least that yeah. was. So, like, when I was six, I would run home from school to watch x-men and spider-man man because if i didn't run i'd miss it um and i'd be home for a couple of hours before my parents would get home when i was six but my younger siblings would be with an adult they i wouldn't be watching them so and i have no idea where my older siblings were at the time to be completely honest uh probably hanging funny. out with friends because you know they were teenagers they don't want to be messing around with with a six-year-old yeah, well, Papa Nasser could have made him if he wanted to. He just didn't love you that much. But uh, <laughs> what's funny, and I want to hear Kurt's thought process. I wouldn't leave people alone. But that, yeah, I just told that story about mom going shopping midday, right? She'd go midday to go grocery shopping. But if her and my dad went on a, a date night, which they didn't do a ton, but if they went on a date night, they would hire one of the teenagers in his youth group to watch us for the same amount of time, 
right? But during the day, going to the grocery store, <laughs> but everybody's working, so it's gonna be hard for somebody to get home to help me out. I can stay alone. But at night, when my neighbor's actually down the street and everybody can be reached, I get somebody to watch me. I don't know. But Kurt, what's your thought process? I, I I haven't talked about my ages, but what is your thought process on when you let your kids stay alone? At three. They can talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but they no, sleep for four hours. Melatonin, it's fine. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, it was, it was quite a while. Like, I don't think I, so. My son's the oldest, and I don't think we did it until he was a teenager. Um, I just, it's, it, it, like, and I can't even equate that to like when I was a kid, because when I was a kid, it was definitely, you know, the. The stereotype, the cliche thing is we went out and, you know, outside at, as soon as we could in the morning. And then we didn't come home until the street lights came on. The thing yeah. is, that was that yeah. was that was real. And yeah. and 100 percent. And for all intents and purposes, while we weren't alone at home, we were alone, although we were with our friends. But we were alone outside and we rode our bikes all over town to other towns it, on trails in the woods where nobody could find us. You know, I know, just, right? Like, it's just different now. Um, but the thing is, too, nobody in your friend group slash neighborhood slash community went missing in the woods. I, I mean, I'm taking a risk saying this, but t statistically, they didn't just go missing in the woods. Right. And everybody freaked out. I mean, if somebody got hurt, usually you had a friend with you. Some, I mean, people did get hurt. Things happen. But, yeah, I'm not saying, I'm absolutely not saying I'm going to let my kids go roam this neighborhood that I live in and, hey, y'all come back when the lights come on. It is a different time. It's a different world. People are less respectful. Even strangers back in my day in small towns. Now, it's a, when I say small town, I'd have to Google the numbers. But there was two big churches. That's it. That's the size of this, this is South Georgia town. One big bank, two big churches. And at some point we got a Walmart and it was small, you know, and, and, and there was one restaurant to eat at pizza hut. That was it. So small town, most everybody knew of at least everybody. Right. Yeah. And so if I was out in public somewhere by myself or seemingly by myself, somebody would, inevitably recognize me especially in, and in our neighborhood while we were not all friends we didn't do block parties the parents knew who's each other's kids were and the neighbors that didn't have kids would know hey that's the mcfall kid he lives at that house down there and that's not the way it is now um, yeah it's, it is very different i mean when i was young young we lived in the only neighborhood i the only thing i would classify as a neighborhood um ever uh, that I've lived in and, and it really was, it was such a neighborhood where th like most of the people had kids on the street, but also we would just like walk in and out of each other's houses without thinking twice about it. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and it was just, that's just what happened. And so like we did have a, a kid on the street, uh, fell into a sand pit and died mm. and and literally the parents were running in and out of each other's houses letting everybody know what was going on and and it was just it was it was a big deal but the, you know but again he was out he was an older kid but he was out playing with his friends and there was this giant sand pit in the back of it behind the neighborhood and we all would go there and play, but we wouldn't really go to the top of the sand pit. And he did. And the loose mm, sand just sucked him got in. It. Oh, yeah. no. That's so. But, but, but that was, that was really, that was a different time. And, it, and that was really when we went out, like, even when I was, I, I was eight when I first broke my arm. I broke my arm three times when I was a kid. Um, but eight years old was the first time. And it was out, I was out 6 a.m. riding my bike in the neighborhood. And I flipped and ended up breaking my arm. And three sets of parents came out from their houses because they heard me. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. in a way, the neighborhood was like one giant house, <laughs> you know, that we were all there for. When so. I, 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 whatever age I was, on the neighbor, neighbor's trampoline with the neighbor kids. And, I stepped wrong, 
get hit my knee hit the bar my foot went under the, the mattress the, the trampoline mattress and my head hit the ground so i hyper extended my knee and i of course apparently i blacked out for a second because i don't remember screaming but apparently i let out a scream that my mom heard it five houses down and just instinctively knew it was me and the neighbor i mean the person in the house was like and they backed the station wagon up into the backyard like an ambulance and load me into the back of it take me to the local er you know it was it was different times um but back to the question joe of of i think you nailed it about how old should they be right it's about maturity levels so zoe i does not remember the what we call the old house uh where we lived on the lake my, my oldest Two definitely have strong memories of that house. They were born there. All the kids were born there, but uh, she was really a baby when we moved to where we are now, the neighborhood we're in now. Uh, so she didn't remember that. So she was fairly young, but toddler range. You know, I think, I, I don't remember exactly what year we moved over here, but it's just, say she was around three-ish. And for the first time ever, we were now in a city and there's a movie theater 15 minutes away. And so my wife and I, and my mother-in-law and my brother-in-law lived two houses down, you know, and it was like, you know what we've got, you know, the kids go to bed. They spent their entire lives being good. They know how to use a cell phone if they need it. And they know how to go get their, their grandma or their uncle. If they, if something happens, you know, they're, and so we would leave them, you know, we put them in bed and we'd tell Oakland being the oldest, he's about nine or 10. So, Hey, and we'd let Nana and the uncle know we're, we're going to be over here. All right. So they would check in or whatever, but we kind of pulled that Gen X early eighties, nineties stuff of, all right, they're going to sleep. They're not going to know we're gone. And we left a note just in case one got up or something and they knew how to get help. And we just go across town and watch a movie and come back. Uh, the first time we took a trip and basically left them alone. I don't think Oakland was maybe 14. 15 but we were like <clears throat> excuse me the family dynamic was such that getting an adult to stay there for two nights was very difficult uh so we said okay here's the deal here's a phone we worked it out with all the adults again relatives are two houses down he, we actually knew that neighbors right next to us on either side and and we do regular check-ins and and her dad and her brother and, and different people would come by at different times of course but they were old enough and mature enough even at that age at 14 15 he knew they all from him to zoe all knew how to feed themselves we had made meals they're in the fridge notes so we prepped everything and it was it was a little nerve-wracking for my wife and probably every hour or two she's calling and checking in and facetiming and, but it's a little risky but again that maturity level and the safe that's why i asked about what constitutes as a loan and that safety net because my father-in-law nor my brother-in-law stayed overnight slept in the house but they definitely were over there a lot to to play with the kids and well, hang out and your brother-in-law he he he's a people watcher <laughs> yeah and, and he'll just wander over randomly to your house all the time and so he you don't even have to ask him and he keeps an eye on your house even if you don't want him to <laughs> especially if you don't want him to 100 